What's going on, guys? Welcome to All Access Magic. I'm your host, Mr. Ryan Edwards. This guy over here is... Blaze Sarah. Welcome, everyone, to the show. I'm really excited about this one. This is a guest that's uh, been long awaited for me. Uh, and Ryan uh, is yet to really meet this person. I <laughs> so, haven't met her. Uh, all of uh, about six seconds. All of your time three. in the magic community, you guys. Yeah. Have haven't crossed paths yet. We have not crossed paths. So I'm excited. I'm excited to, to meet this person tonight and uh, and get to know them and uh, and find out more about them. So yeah, she is a uh, multi-talented artist. I think artist first and foremost before magician even. So uh, I'm really interested to hear that perspective and also some of the really cool projects that she's been doing recently incorporating her interests in magic. So without further ado, let's bring on Who's saying it? <laughs> Let's bring it, on. It, it's, it's all you. Right. It's all me. <laughs> Let's bring on. I mean, she's the man. She's the man. The That's myth. It. The legend. Jeanette. The man. The myth. The woman. Andrew. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Oh, you oh, are muted, muted right now. Uh, you got yourself muted down at the bottom there. Oh, yes, there of course, go. because of course. Um, uh, hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me <laughs> on today. For everybody watching, that was, our, uh, I met Jeanette six seconds ago before we came on and we kicked her backstage. And then that was the the quick thing was, oh, no, what do, how do we announce Jeanette tonight? Do do and I'm trying to oh, remember well, what we did when involved. we had like, what yeah. I mean, and the thing is, we, we're not our had, first female no. guest either. We've had like Ekaterina on and things like, I don't remember what we, we said. Just, <laughs> we just couldn't remember. I was like, what did we say last time? So uh it's it's been a little while so it, but it's good it's great to have you on which is okay. a reflection on the magic community <laughs> yeah yeah Punks. some things that need to be changed so so welcome to the show Jeanette um thank you for Thanks. making time for us you've been really really busy recently and so uh, yeah I mean uh, I would just love to uh, to hear about some of the projects that you've been up to I know that you just kind of finished like an art installation correct? yeah yeah I mean I'm happy to talk about um Whatever, but yeah, that, um, so um, for uh, those who have not encountered me before, um, uh, because I you know I kind of float outside of, you know, a lot of sort of the the, the magic world for a bit. I was super, super involved in, in the magic world for a long time, but um, like a thousand years ago. But um, uh, that's, that is that is my primary background. Um, so for like two seconds of sort of, um, I guess, self-introduction for content. Who are you? Who am I? Who am I? Why am I here? What's going on? Um, no, I did. Um, so I've been a magician now for, um, I think I figured out that next, it's like next week, I think marks the start of year 28. Um, wow. yeah. And, um, and so, and I, I, being a magician is the only job I've ever had. Um, and so I, I grew up, um, definitely being, uh, like very involved first in stage magic as like a young child, like, you know, six, seven, eight, and then, uh, and then got into close up and parlor. Um, mm -hmm. and so that was my main, you know, kind of my main wheelhouse. Um, and then, uh, kind of in my mid teens started to kind of merge magic and a contemporary art practice. Um, and so now like doing, doing corporate and private events, um, you know, that's my bread and butter. Um, but then uh, everything that I do that's public facing is all in the contemporary art world and academia. So um, speaking mm -hmm. to your point, Blaze, um, I did just wrap, um, uh, you named it so perfectly. Yes, it was like a large scale installation um, and performance art piece called Taken by Artificial Surprise, which um, explored the sort of intersections between the history of parlor magic um, and machine learning and surprise. So it was kind of magic machine learning and surprise, um, which was something that I was working on for about two years, um, really kind of started working on at the almost like at the not quite the beginning of the pandemic, but kind of. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to get a bit of a feel from an article that I was reading. And so when you're talking about combining um, like like artificial intelligence and and kind of like data aggregation with yeah. surprise. So yeah. you were kind of comparing the different kinds of effects that evoke different kinds of surprise and then collecting exactly. data on that. And 
than yeah. displaying. So could you elaborate a little bit more? Because I <laughs> am not yeah. doing a good job. Yeah, of course. So um, so I've always been very interested, you know, through like certainly throughout my career, I've always been really interested in why, just, just from a psychology standpoint, why certain types of magic effects elicit more of a surprise response than others like what are some of uh, essentially kind of some of those psychological trigger points that make that happen like for mm -hmm. example if you do any sort of like cut and restored or torn and restored effect the second that you have you know a rope and a pair of scissors or something an audience is like five minutes down the road from you and 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 knows that inevitably due to our sort of social ideas of what magic is that if you see a magician cut something or tear something, they sort of have to restore it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and with whatever almost sort of narrative arc happens there, you know, there's different things that may happen, but that's not, it doesn't elicit as much of a surprise effect as, for example, some things that we see within certain forms of like transformations in magic, which tend to be a lot more like deeply surprising uh, to lay audiences. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have performed now for like over 20 years and it's sort of like my staple piece, um, have performed, um, a rose petal to egg. And that piece for, you know, for lay audiences, like that is very reliant on surprise. And because I've performed it since I was a young child, you know, I was always really interested in like, what is it about this particular piece of magic? What is going on behind it that makes it have such a deeply, almost borderline shocking response? Mm -hmm. and, um, and in 2019, I found, because uh, I'm very interested in like the science of magic and am a part of sort of, you know, the science of magic association and sort of more in that orbit. And so in 2019, I found a psychology paper um, by a really amazing um, psychologist in, I think he's based in the UK now, um, Thomas Griffiths. And he had done a study called, I think it is called the um, Transformations in Magic and Ontological Commitments. So basically he, he was looking at in, in certain magical transformations, essentially the sort of ideas that we as humans have like deep seated in sort of the, the almost like material being of an object and then how that constitutes w basically what would make a transformation from object B to object A or vice versa, apologies, more surprising. Like, so for example, he talks about um, points of symmetry and asymmetry. So again, all of this, when you say it, it sounds so obvious, but, um, but actually seeing it written out is, is deeply helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, like he talks about why having, if you see a glass of water transform into a glass of milk, that might be surprising. But if you see a glass of milk transform into a dove, that's more surprising. Mm -hmm. And it's more surprising, he kind of talks about, um, or he actually talks about levels of interestingness as opposed to surprise. It's more interesting because the color between the two is the same. The material is different. So there's sort of a point of asymmetry there. And then the scale is similar. Um, and then there's sort of an upward movement along a scale of animacy. So it's going from, you know, as opposed to like liquid to liquid, it's liquid yeah. to animal. So it's more, so it's not, and, yeah, right. So like, for, yeah. like, as opposed to when you think about, you know, it, it, he, he even posits that it's more interesting to see milk to dove than water to dove because mm -hmm. there's that, there's that, you know, joining point of the color. So like that sort of thing is how I got interested mm -hmm. in this. Um, and then basically, uh, got sort of thrust into unexpectedly sort of the digital humanities sphere and, um, throughout, um, through COVID, um, I had a, um, totally non-magic, non-performance related, um, a GPS activated augmented reality audio art piece that was commissioned by the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. Mm -hmm. So that ended up landing me, um, within the orbit, um, and now I'm like 
an affiliate of Metal Lab with Harvard. And so then through that, um, basically started a lot of conversations about the history of machine learning and about how a lot of what we think of as contemporary AI is actually founded upon um, historic ideas that originated in the late 1800s about whether or not a machine can take a human by surprise. So basically, I started thinking about um, one of my uh, Metalab colleagues was like, well, you know, there's a lot sort of swirling around um, a lot of early sort of thought experiments that informed a lot of early ideas on machine learning and computational intelligence were really bracketed by ideas in in um, almost uh, Victorian parlor game imagery. And he was like, well, is Victorian parlor games, that sort of s- seems like it has sort of a similar um, like visual vocabulary to Victorian parlor magic. Is that true? And I was like, yes, absolutely. And he was like, and Victorian um, parlor games and Victorian parlor magic he's like you know victorian parlor magic is that something that's in your wheelhouse and i was like yeah that's kind of one of my main interests and you know kind of thought about well is parlor magic sort of historic parlor magic is that an interesting way to have a conversation about these uh, history of machine learning and surprise so basically what i started to do is i worked with um with a coder um initially somebody from the yale digital humanities lab and then later um, a couple of independent people basically to take a lot of um we were taking a lot of historic magic texts um we were looking at like the masculine catalogs we were looking some early abbots catalogs um and then basically taking all that running it through ocr running it through then a number of sort of um custom algorithms to then sort of create structures within the descriptions of magic effects within the text, and then looking at the different objects that were being sort of popped into and out of those descriptions Mm -hmm. um, to then think about sort of what, what outputs were being more or less surprising sort of along the vectors that we had created. And then basically once we got sets of outputs um, that were sort of descriptions for magic effects, then I, you know, picked a couple and um, then came up with ways to perform them. Um, so it's sort of set amidst amidst a, a, a massive installation. So that's, that's the piece in a very verbose nutshell. Wow, that that yeah. was a very verbose uh, nutshell, but that on. was I very missed, helpful. I That's also the quickest part. way to explain it. No, I missed the second part. So we could go back. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah like, let me start. I'm, I'll go back to the 1950 Alan Turing paper. Yeah. Right <laughs> no, but so that's very fascinating. Is that essentially? Uh, if I'm understanding correctly, the show that you performed, you weren't, you went into this project not being in control of the show that you were going to eventually have to perform after all of this data was aggregated. And then you just trusted that this computer is going to tell me what is supposed to be by all of the data that we've collected, like the most surprising magic effect that it can come up with. And then you had to bring it to life and actually make it something performable. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That sounds pretty interesting. That's I mean, really cool. I know Thanks. we've talked we've talked about it on the show before. I know uh, Vanishing Inc. said a couple of years ago that they did a university, uh, I guess, experiment uh, with magic and finding out like you know how people reacted to card tricks and mentalism mm-hmm. and right. you know parlor stuff. And so, <clears throat> was any of that information added in as well to this? Because I mean if if you're going through these old manuscripts and stuff and saying okay like a lot of it i'm sure must have been card stuff i mean there's obviously in par- parlor stuff as well but is it like oh yeah this is not maybe i don't agree that this is a surprising thing because research since then has told me as well that this is this is not a great trick or whatever yeah i mean to be fair like i as you can tell, this is already a very overwrought, overly complicated project. So I definitely, (laughs) I was trying not to add anything else to it that was not necessary. Um, I'm familiar with the Vanishing Ink study. um, And basically what ended up happening was I also was on severe time constraints in making this piece because it was also sort of had to, the performance and installation came to fruition as part of um, I was the artist in residence for Culture Lab here in New York. So basically that had to, the performance and the installation was sort of part of the culmination of my residency with them. So um, so I also only had 
like six months to make this thing. Uh, so there were there were outputs that I would argue would have been more surprising or better or more interesting based on whatever, but also like I am a human with 24 hours in a day. Um, and yeah. I was awake what felt like constantly, but you know, if I had had a couple of years to really, really, you know, hone something different, you know, yeah. For sure. So is that, can you tell us one that, uh, that they, you know, they spit it out and said, okay, here's what the trick or whatever that you have to perform that you were like, I, I totally disagree with this. Like, this is not, <laughs> this would not be good or this is not what I would have picked. Yeah. Cause like the, the computer doesn't factor taste into it. Well, I guess it does. Yeah. It factors what people find interesting. The general public finds interesting, but that does, that has nothing to do with your personality and what you would actually be interested in performing. So, yeah, I mean like for, so for example, what we did is we took, um, the whole and again this was basically again because of the time constraints you have to bear in mind time constraints budget constraints everything um you know this was this was done in a way that you know was not able to be executed to its fullest extent like the algorithm that um that we designed was sort of like half baked because mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, there just physically wasn't time to to the the level of nuance that goes into the back end of making something like that is quite extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and so for that, basically, we took a set of um, there were the most commonly cited nouns within the 1899 masculine catalog. And so then that was like so it was a lot of things like you saw a lot of things that were like, you know, beads and you know things a ladies like, kerchief yeah where it was like okay like you know things like you did see cigarettes um yeah. and things like that where i'm like well i don't think the like the venue is not going to be down with me lighting things on fire or like you know things yeah. like that that just from a very practical standpoint not even necessarily a taste standpoint but where i was like in 2022 you just can't like, I'm like a liability. I, I can't like light shit on fire in this. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, yes. you know. um, so, so there definitely was stuff like that. Um, there was a lot that were things that of course, as we think of, of a lot of like, you know, AI generated stuff um, that were nonsensical in a way that like, I'm trying to, th I, I honestly, because they were things that were discarded, they're not like at the top of my brain, but there were things that would be like, you know, a magician, you know, stands on a stage and again, that this isn't, this isn't, th this isn't one, but it was stuff like this where like, because we we're using commonly cited nouns, a hand is a noun and pocket is a noun. <laughs> you would see stuff where it would be like, a magician makes a hand and a pocket appear or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, well, I mean, if you ask Steve Valentine, that may just be a well, pocket. Uh, like, okay, like, fair like, enough, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> 80, 80 different sequences of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So. so yeah, so there definitely was stuff like that where it was like, just okay. your hand pulling another hand yeah. out of your pocket. Which again, this like, odd hand. This like, is uh, really weird. And then inside that hand is another pocket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be revolutionary. That would be surprising. This is really, this is really extraordinary data you've got there. Have you it guys ever seen a hand pocket? <laughs> but I was like, this is also like again. Yeah, like, I would be surprised if you pulled a hand out of your pocket. Yeah, and yeah, yeah like, like that would, it, and then have a pocket in the hand, like yeah, just, like flapped yeah, yeah. open. It's like oh. Yeah, it's just like it's and like that's the where you dolls the rabbit of, from, and that is a surprise. Just a nesting dolls of hands. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so like there was stuff like that that was surprising, but again, there were, I was just like, nah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And the interesting thing to me is like you know, obviously, you're it's the algorithm is going through magic catalogs and stuff. Uh, I remember doing a TV show like. 15 years ago and i i was doing a lot of card magic back then and i was like everything is this card trick card trick card trick and we went out and filmed like you know 10 episodes or something and then the guys were like um hey are you are you gonna just do card tricks on the show and i was like well they're amazing and it's like 
you know, the regular general public doesn't want to see just card tricks. And it was like, what? And so it was interesting for me to have to pick things for the TV show by getting the general public or laymen, as we call them sometimes, uh, or audience members to to look through and go, what do you think is the best and stuff and like get people that are outside magic because I think sometimes magicians think tricks are so cool. They're like, oh, this is amazing. This is going to get the craziest reaction. And then they do it on stage and the audience is like, oh, we don't give a shit about this. Like, or what made this any different than the last trick you did? And was that like, part of the impetus for like wanting to do this whole experiment in the first place was like having a trick that you really wanted to do that you thought the audience would love. And then it didn't get the reaction you wanted. And you're like, <laughs> no. I need to do a whole study about this. No, the, the, impetus, the impetus of it was exactly what I explained. That like, mm. I was just interested in like what audiences find surprising and why. And then mm. this colleague of mine was just like, well, you know, I could go into a lot more detail on like the history of surprise and machine learning. But basically it was just like, it, you know, obviously like, especially, you know, two years ago, for example, that was like before, you know, before Dolly, before a lot of these like, you know, stuff like that, where then like, ideas about machine generated art like was not in the public consciousness mm. at all and so like you know so you know us just kind of having a, you know a conversation about like hey is using magic as a way to talk about surprise and the history of machine learning like is this interesting and and i was like well i think so so you know so you know that was yeah. that was really it yeah, that's awesome that that's a really cool experiment thanks yeah Sounds intense. Right. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Do you think it's that time for? Uh, I think yeah. First, I, to know Jeanette a little bit more. I know Jeanette. You you don't have too much time with us tonight. Uh, yes, I'm know. like I uh, I have to jump off in about ten or fifteen minutes because I am flying out um, uh, tomorrow for uh, for for a show. So nice, nice. All right, yeah. so we'll, so we'll get to I know you real quick. Fun. Two minutes, and uh, we're having it ready. To Ladies go. and gentlemen, it's that time. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. Put two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. Get two minutes on the clock. Here we go. All right. Uh, so, Jeanette, what's going to happen is we are going to ask you rapid fire questions back Amazing. and forth between us. Uh, so give us your most honest, awesome answers that you can. Uh, and we'll I'm see not how scared many at all. Do. Okay. That's in we'll three, two, one. Dream vacation destination. Oh, Iceland. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, people who lie. Biggest mistake during a performance. Uh, are there lay people watching this? <laughs> no. Nah. All right. Um, uh, basically not having like a serial number for a, for a bill to impossible location that I didn't switch back. Um, and basically like the serial numbers didn't match. And I forgot that I hadn't switched it back. And I stood there at the end of an effect and I was like, what is, how is this possible? What am I seeing? <laughs> Like I had baffled myself about why it was wrong for yeah. a split second. But yeah, that was like an 18, the mistake of an 18 year old that I was like, what am I? What, what, what always makes you laugh? Oh God. Um, I don't know. It, this shows my age. Um, back, back in the day, uh, Jay Leno headlines segments. Nice. Uh, secret talent. Secret talent. Um, I cook a lot. Um, that's not really a secret, though. That's good. First time you ever saw a magic trick? Oh, um, when I was four, I saw a Siegfried and Roy TV special, and that's why I'm a magician. Hey, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, being invisible. Dream performance venue? Uh, the Guggenheim. Most cherished memory? Oh, that's hard. Um... Honestly, really just spending time with my parents. Favorite food? Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know. Probably the same similar thing. Probably eating 
probably eating cookie dough with my mom. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's... So we, uh, is that the 20? New, we have a new record. No, no, but you set a record. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, the, for, the, the, for the least, least amount of questions answered. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds correct. I'm like, can I give a 20 minute explanation for each of these? Yeah. yeah. It's all Everyone good. Else is like, really? Pizza done. Yeah. This yeah. is a legendary episode. Now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What was, um, what was Kenner's score? Because he, he I think, was our lowest before. Right? I think he got to 12, maybe? 12, 12 or 14. Yeah. yeah. Should we go through the rest of the questions fast to uh, find them sure. out? Sure. I'm like, I got, I got it. Or, like or maybe, it's, so. <laughs> maybe it's a waste oh, of time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll go as sure, fast as we possibly can. Then. One question, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, favorite yeah. movie? Oh, The Truman Show. What's hey, the worst job? Too. Oh, really? What's the worst yeah. job you ever had? The, being a magician. Well, the you only said being I've a magician, had. yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, favorite magician, Arthur Trace. If you won the lottery, what's the first thing you'd buy? Uh, honestly, I'd like donate most of it. Nice. Uh, what's your most highly recommended magic product or book? Book, um, probably. I mean, right now, I would have to say Theseus by Nathan Colwell. Uh, if you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? Uh, ba, ba, ba. Maybe, probably Charade. Uh, would you rather feel like a potato or look like a potato? Oh, feel like a potato all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> if you had one wish, what would you wish for? Um, a lot less violence in the world. A lot less guns. Mm. Mm. Nice. Uh, favorite toy growing up? M magic any and all magic stuff i magic can get my hands on <laughs> yeah and our final question favorite sports team chicago blackhawks nice, nice. look at that someone yeah. I, a magician that has an answer for that yeah. question is always oh my God. in my book yeah, that, is, uh, uh, that is great because the majority of guests cannot answer that question they're like really? i don't watch sports i just can't seriously magic, it's yeah. it's embarrassing for all of us but oh, uh, well, i, I mean, cringe I... every time <laughs> no, I'm a, I, I come from a hockey family. My dad used to be the strength trainer for the Chicago Blackhawks. So, oh, that's badass. We, like, we are like a diehard yeah. Blackhawks family. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, a Leafs, a, I'm a Leafs fan, but uh, but I appreciate that you had a great answer right away. Yeah. Oh, well, Leafs, Leafs is, Leafs is, is right up there. My, yeah. my family's from Toronto. So, oh, Leafs okay. Are, oh, Leafs nice. are solid. Original, nice. original six. So. You're Ryan's new favorite guest. Yeah. You might be my favorite guest. So, <laughs> someone that knows who the is Leafs a, are. Is this a hockey yeah. podcast? Now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, well, it gets magic. better. Um, now, uh, so Tigger says, it sounds like you do a lot of reading. Do you ever use audiobooks so you can multitask and get other things done? If so, what books do you recommend? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, I go back and forth on audiobooks. Sometimes I get very into them, but most of the time I, I can't. I'm a big podcast listener. Um, and for um, like general curiosity podcasts, um, my favorite that I really, really love is um, in, uh, it's put out by PopSci Magazine and it's called The Weirdest Thing I Learned This Week. It's fabulous. Pop Sci Magazine? Yeah. Oh, what I learned this week. Let me check. Uh, no, the weirdest thing I learned oh. this week. Oh, the weirdest thing. Yeah, it's great. Weirdest thing I learned this week. Yes. Um, um, and, ah, I see. Well, even if you're uh, you're not somebody who's into audiobooks, uh, then that podcast, the weirdest thing I learned this week, is available on Audible. Uh, well, okay. Well, we're gonna fix that. <laughs> we're gonna show the other screen. Uh, That's okay. Yeah, People love the back end. Yeah, exactly. You get to see exactly how it works. You know, this is uh, yes. all about data aggregation, viewer retention, and uh, and now. There we go. Okay, so if you're interested in the weirdest thing that I learned this week, you can check it out and go to audibletrial.com slash magic and uh, support the show. You've fallen into the traps of our ad read. Yes. <laughs> so, Brilliant. Yeah. So even if you aren't an audiobook listener, uh, like we are, uh, Ryan and I are really big on audiobooks, but you can check out podcasts as well, including ours on, uh, on Audible. Now, um, yeah, so there is an important question that we need to get to. Um, but Ryan's going to miss it for a minute. So I'm going to wait for him to get back. He'll be back okay. really shortly. But um, now 
I met you, Jeanette, because of Speakeasy Magic. We both yes. perform in that show uh, on a pretty much like weekly basis. So how did you get involved in that show? How long have you been a part of it? And uh, what are your thoughts on like, you know, what makes Speakeasy unique? I mean, it's it's a, I mean, I'm 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 biased, but um I first saw the show uh, in like spring or summer of 2019 mm. and like summer of 2019. And I went with a person, a lay friend of mine and her mom who happened to be vacationing in New York. And it was really funny because they sat there the whole time. And like after each performance, they kind of look at me like, this is good. This is really good. Right. And I was looking at them. I'm going to be like, you have no idea the mm. level of what you are seeing. Mm. And, um, you know, and I got to see, I remember that night seeing, you know, we got to see Prakash, who is honestly like my favorite mm. close up magician to watch, um, does the most killer bill and lime you'll ever see. And, um, you know, when Alex Boyce, and that's how I'm part of the show is, is Boyce because, um, I've known him for years and, um, and then after Speakeasy Magic started, I had been splitting my time between Chicago and New York for about four or five years mm -hmm. and just had been performing here more and more and more and more to the level that in 2019, I was in New York about like 40% of the year. And I was like, okay, I think I need to move. And, um, but even, even without him knowing that, you know, I, I had just been around a lot and Alex had seen me perform, of course, and, and was like, you know, we're trying to basically fill out, you know, the, you know, the performers in the show, we already have like the main cast, but when you're in town, you know, would you want to do it? And I was so blown away by the show. I mean, the, the coordinate, you know, I mean, it's, you know, obviously anything that McKittrick does, the production of it is fabulous. The stage management of it is incredible. The set design is incredible. Um, you know, the whole team behind it and the aesthetic and everything is so cohesive. And I think that's something that's really lacking in magic. And it just mm -hmm. reads so instantly as being so well executed. Mm -hmm. And I was a diehard Sleep No More fan. I mean, well, not die I heard like I had seen it once um <laughs> uh, I was not traveling from another continent that to see is it, but, die um, hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh but I was but I loved it so I was a big fan of the McKittrick and um yeah so I think I think being you know being a part of that show is such an extreme privilege that every time I walk through those doors I am so wildly grateful for yeah, it is. I feel so privileged to be a part of that show and like honored to be a part of it because like I, it and it's the, I think it's the show of anything that I've been a part of the one that I'm the most proud to invite people to because I know yeah. even if I wasn't there like I know that they're they're seeing like top not top notch magic that's like the best in the world, you know. It's like 100%. You know, yeah. 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 It's, it's really incredible. So yeah, we're proud of our show. Uh, so yes. check it out if you're in New York. You're missing out if you don't. Um, now we uh, we do have an important question. <laughs> Okay. The most, the and then most, I'm going to have to run after I hopefully question. can answer your important question. Okay. All right. You cannot take so, as long as the You two cannot months. take as long. <laughs> this is a very yeah, good luck. This is a fast one. All right. It's coming whether you like it or not. Lasagna. Lasagna. What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Meat. Lasagna. Veggie. Lasagna. Plain. Lasagna. Saucy! Lasagna! What's your favorite genre of lasagna? We got it. Oh my know. god, this was the easiest question. A white oh. a white spinach lasagna with a white wine sauce. Done. Wow. 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 Okay, that's that was exceptional. One. That's good. All right. Like now that. let's say that you bake two identical white wine lasagnas, right? Oh, and stack them? And they stack them. Do you now have one lasagna or two? So this, so this is a this is a question I've heard in in podcasts before. I've heard many debates around this. I am very. You have heard this on a podcast before that was not ours. I'm yes, sorry, this is really upsetting. This and is, it's this is some type of news that someone. Is but they they don't have they don't have our uh, the heart of the cards. <laughs> they don't no, have what we don't. have. Um, I, you know, I'm very torn. I, I have gone both ways in this argument and I don't know. I, I, Does my, nice my things. gut, my gut is that it's one lasagna. That's my gut. 
Whew. Well, all right. So she uh, she endorses our lasagna mathematics hoodie. You can get it at allaccessmagic.com. One plus one does equal one in the world of lasagna. All right. <laughs> now, Hell yeah, I love this. Now, a question that I actually the most comfy yeah. most comfy sweater ever. A so. seri a serious question to actually end this off that was from Tigger that I do really want to know is uh, you are a very busy person and you, uh, like as we've been able to tell you're someone who spends a lot of time researching and uh, so how do you balance your work life and hobbies and uh, you know and all of these different projects with just being a person? Yeah. So. Um... This is, I'll be just totally candid with you. This is the first year in my life in the past like 13 months that I've had any sort of life at all. I mean, I have worked, no joke, you can ask anyone who knows me well, I've worked 365 days a year for like decades hmm. with no, I mean, and and sometimes that's like 16 hours a day. Like, I mean, it's it's madness. So this is the first year that I've had I think because of doing that, this is the first year I've been like, oh, wait, I can have friends. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's my answer is not like a happy answer, but <laughs> she's yeah. a machine. But uh, if you, yeah. Yeah, she's just yeah. a machine. Yeah. But if you sacrifice <laughs> like sometimes the present for the future, put in the work, then you can accomplish like really great yeah. creative projects that you wouldn't have been able to done if you hadn't put the time in. So there awesome. you go. Boom. So thank you again so much for being a part of the show. Thank you. you Thanks for having me. And uh, yes, one, one lasagna. Yes. One lasagna. One lasagna. That's, that's, that's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I think safe, so. safe travels. And, thank you. Uh, you Thanks awesome so much, show. guys. And, uh, and hopefully we'll have you back on sometime. Yeah. Yes, and I love that. Everybody can check out you on uh, at Jeanette Andrews Magic on Instagram and everything. And yes. uh, and then if they want to check out, I know that there was a book that was associated as well. Is that is that an actual book people can can purchase as well? That yes. was the, the the Invisible Museum. Yes. Wow. Um, thanks, Blaze. Um, yeah, my um, yeah, I did um, do a book that was basically like the companion book to the um, sound art piece um, that I did for the MCA Chicago and then the Quebec City Biennial. Um, that's on Amazon. It's also available through Printed Matter um, here in New York and on their website. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. So check out Invisible Museums as well. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Jeanette. We hope to have you on again soon. Thanks. Me too. Have okay. a great night, guys. Take it easy. Yeah. Peace. All right. And I the show take, must I go on. I'm going to take you back over here. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because All right. when I'm, my computer screen is diagonal. And so every time I look over, like I was looking at Jeanette, like I'm mm. looking here. Oh, I'm yeah. Because I usually look at you when I'm talking to you. But when when I when you're on the other side, I have to do this, and I'm like, I am looking. Oh yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Like, like I feel so stupid. I'm like, it looks like I am not involved in the podcast at all. That I'm oh, like, I do, I've done that so many times where I'll put I'll put this on this monitor over here, and then I'll just be like, yeah. oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> just I, I don't even realize it because I've got the camera right in the middle now, and I've separated both. I part way through that, like right at the start of the episode, I had everybody over here. But I was looking like this and I felt like I was still every time I looked back, I was like, oh, this feels really awkward. So I had to put it back here. But then when you're not on this side, I'm like, oh, hey, Blaze, there you are. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, my God, this looks so bad. So, no, um, I, I love how Lindsay nice just back. missed Jeanette or Jeanette I really missed Lindsay. I mean, yeah, yeah man, I missed the entire thing. Yeah, <laughs> Jeanette. Lindsay, uh, I Jeanette friends. missed you for sure. Uh, but uh, but we will have her back on it. But I am just happy that in the midst of probably the most educated conversation, we were still able to squeeze in lasagna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her excellent. So. Her explanation at the start, I was like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I was like, this, this all of a sudden got way too smart for all access. <laughs> it's like, just like, oh my thing? gosh, like, this is like way smarter than any yeah, magic was, discussion we've ever had. Like, like, like when yeah. we thought that we've gotten in the weeds. Yeah, like last week topic was a before. pretty good episode where we talked a lot of magic. A lot of magic. That a lot was of just theory. like. That was another level. My right? brain was starting to ooze out in my ears. I was but like, I what then, is well, at the, it took me a while to like fully grasp what she was describing. What? And then uh, at the very it. end of what she was saying, then I was like, oh, now I can't. At the <laughs> end, I got it. I got it. But at halfway through, I was like, 
but yeah, it's like I mean, she <laughs> was like, do, she was doing get, something that was really unique in Magic, and I think it did require, I guess, a lot of backstory to be able to give oh, us yeah. the context because what she's doing hasn't really been done before, you know. <laughs> Hundred um, percent. I just saw Grant's thing. I have two microwave lasagnas in my freezer because of that question. Um, yeah, they, that she no, she was awesome. I can't believe that she's been in Magic for twenty eight years and I've never crossed yeah. paths with her. Oh, right. uh, that's it, because I feel like I know everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, like, there's not too many people that. I mean, you've had a couple. Well, I feel like I'm good at bringing on the only people you don't know in Magic. Like yeah, those are the people yeah, that I bring absolutely. on as guests. <laughs> Most back alley people. <laughs> She's, hey, no, hey, no, Tigger no, T said that lady is a genius. Please bring her back. She, she was awesome, but she said she hasn't been out in like 13 years or decades. She's yeah. like, so that is why I don't know her. Um, but uh, but there's not too many people that I go, oh, I have no idea who that is. And maybe if they're newer in magic and stuff, but yeah. Um, yeah. I, I know everybody that everybody knows and <laughs> you know everybody that no one knows. Hey, <laughs> no, man, but she was awesome. Know, she was awesome. Super I do fun. what I got to do. I yeah. bring on the peeps, you know. Yeah, I, uh, no, I'm a man of the people. people. You know, it's I'm, always good to hear from other people that, because I mean, there's been guys that we have on that have been on every podcast and everybody's heard questions from them yeah. and stuff and, or you can go online, but like Jeanette's work, I've never heard of that and stuff. Yeah. And so to hear about it was really fascinating. So yeah, it was awesome. We'll definitely have her back on when she's got some more time. So yeah, yeah, she was, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it sounded really cool what she was talking about. And then she didn't even get to really describe what Invisible Museums was like. That was an yeah. entire like audio only piece that was mm -hmm. like, you know, an art installation, essentially, yeah. I believe. But <laughs> like, yeah, it's it really yeah. cool. So right. um, I bet I bought Ted, Ted Chung's stories of my life from your book recommendations, Blaze. Um, I don't know what that book is. <laughs> I was like, did you, did you recommend so, that book? So um, if you bought it because of me, I sincerely apologize because <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. That's awesome. So I had one <clears throat> super awesome. So Kit, we're, I'm obviously in Canada. And so something has come to Canada as of recently in the last little while. And today I said, Tanya, let's go out there because this weekend is our Thanksgiving. Mm. Uh, like Monday is Thanksgiving. So we're doing a big family get together here on, on Saturday. Uh, and we're going to do a potluck. And, and I said to my mom, she said she's going to do dessert. And then I went on Carlo's Bakery. Mm. Are you familiar with the Cake Boss? Carlo's Bakery? Yeah, Carlo's Bakery, like the TV show Cake Boss. I oh cake boss yeah yeah I'm yeah. familiar with cake boss yeah, yeah. That, they're the ones that do cake boss yeah yeah so that's oh, okay. the bakery that that, that the show is based after so they oh, okay. opened in Canada now uh, about an hour from us so we uh, we took uh, Levi out and went on a drive uh, because before that you could get their slices which there's almost nothing left of this one <laughs> um, only in like a vending machine which is crazy, but I guess they refill them every day and stuff. So we went out absolutely magical place to go into. Mm. I ordered a bunch of stuff. I was really excited to come home and eat on the podcast a piece of cookies and cream cake. Mm. And they gave me the wrong plate, the wrong piece. Oh, they gave you the wrong piece. They gave me like chocolate fudge thing. Oh was, no. Bro. Did not want chocolate cake. Dude. Well, I mean, so, uh, as long as it's not sorbet and lasagna, I think it's true. good, you know? That's true. Yeah, I think that you're you're actually cooling right now. You're actually chilling. Oh, so I was just a guest on a podcast today. <laughs> I, I, saw, I saw that, actually. I saw yeah, that. so it was uh, yeah, called yeah. The Bundle Game, and it's cool. It's run by... Um, by um by Jacqueline Collier and her sister and they uh they're really fun hosts and so they uh they interviewed me and I told some stories on that that I've never told anyone including my parents and oh I uh I do not want them <clears throat> to listen to the episode Blaze's mom and dad can you hear me in the back can you Blaze's mom and dad please do not listen to the episode that is going to be on the bundle game if you want to be um 
if you want to know more about my private life than my mom and dad do, then please tune in to the Bundle Game Podcast when it comes out. Um, yeah, no, it is a, uh, it's a really fun, uh, fun time. And so they asked me some interesting questions. And one question that they asked me was, uh, which I believe is um, kind of one of our 20 questions, you know, is like well, most, they, you know, so they were asking me know. like most embarrassing or awkward moment when mm. performing. Yeah. So like I was curious what you have because I, I think I remember when we did the twenty questions you said something but I'm oh yeah mine was bad uh, sorry I'm just turning this on because it is extremely hot in my office right now uh, mine was bad uh, really bad <clears throat> mine I, I don't want to say should I do like a mess up that I've had on stage or or like just embarrassing. Um, just whatever you feel was the most embarrassing or awkward. I told them the story about the guy with the one arm thing that I've told a few times on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, one, uh, one thing that just came to mind was a time when I was doing a mentalism routine and I did a center tear and, um, and I get this peak and I peak it for so long oh, yeah. because I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> and I literally wrote down hieroglyphics to try and recreate what I had just seen. I did that once. Did and that once. it did not work. I was like X dash eight AC. I mean, it was just like so awful. And um and then I asked her, I was like, so you wrote you wrote the name of this person on the line? And she was just like, yeah, I I mean like you had the X there and the line. So I wrote it like, you know, like vertically along the line and i'm just like you <laughs> thought you're supposed to write vertically next to the line yeah. instead of horizontally on the line <laughs> like anybody else yeah that's brutal i had one where i was using an, an impression device and <laughs> i looked at it and the same thing i was like i can't say i can't tell what this person wrote and it was like a christmas thing i was like when you were a kid, like, is there one thing that you wanted for Christmas that like Santa never brought for you? And so, and the, the guy's like an older guy I'm talking to. And he wrote down like this Cowboys and Indians set. And I'm like, because he, this guy's like old, old, right? Uh, and so I, I'll, I, I think I said like wrench set because I could not read what he wrote. I was like, I've got no idea. And I went back and looked at it after even, and I was like, this is chicken scratch at its mm -hmm. finest. Like, yeah. it was rough. Um, yeah. Worst moment, most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Uh, I dressed up like Spider-Man and did magic when I was really young. Uh, uh, it was like one of my first paid gigs with this guy who told me he was going to become my manager and he was going to get me so much more money and all this stuff. And then he like wanted to give me almost no money to do it and then said he got me a costume and I was like no I don't want to wear a costume and I got there and it was Spider-Man and so I did Spider-Man for like three hours for a graduation party at this guy who was supposed to be my awesome manager who I ended up telling that day uh keep this never contact me ever again mm. uh and that was that was my worst uh probably the worst gig I've ever had that is awful that really sucked yeah. yeah i mean at least it was spider-man he had a shrek costume as well and Jeez. i was like yeah that's not happening that's uh, not happening yeah so geez that's rough i'm trying yeah. to think of like worst i mean i've definitely made a lot of mistakes in, in a performance you know um i mean i'm trying to think of, like i mean last show i did i had a mistake where oh, this really? woman just happened to shuffle the cards in such a way that only two cards got switched. And uh, and so then when she took the card off of the top, I thought it was the one that she had somehow done <laughs> this with. Out of all of the shuffling, the only thing that got mixed was this. So it just threw off what I was expecting. So yeah. then I literally like do the reveal. I'm already committed. She has to take it out of her pocket. It's the wrong card. And then I was just like, Oh, this year looks like the five of clubs to me. And then I was just like, <laughs> it's just like, I see five clubs on this. Ja you said this is the Jack of diamonds. I see five clubs. And then I just did like a college. Year. I've done that. I've miscalled things and oh, stuff yeah. where like, even if I'm putting in a number or something and I've totally realized like, 
oh, I've, I've botched this. Yeah. I will just miscall it, misread it. And yeah. I'm oh, I've heard it yeah. so much. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. I remember I, doing yeah. one thing with a watch and I was like, or a clock, and I was like, totally had the wrong time on this clock. And I was like, I turned the clock. <laughs> like, pulling it out, I was like, and it's 345. Is that the time you said? And she's like, uh, and I was like, and yes, it is. And, and yes, yeah, it I is. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, I was oh, like man, dude. Was I mean, uh, there was one time where I was doing a stage show and, uh, and I decided that I was going to do an effect where I had my, my friend was, I knew was coming to the show. So I was like, I'm going to write pre-write my friend's name in this reveal for the end of the show. And then they yeah. texted me and they were like, Oh, we're running five minutes late. And this is five minutes before the show. They mm -hmm. said, we'll be there in five. Yeah. So, I'm like, all right, it's fine. They'll be here in five. They'll miss the opener, like the first effect. But this is 20 minutes in. Yeah. And then they <laughs> missed the entire set. Nice. And I have in this envelope that is going to be on stage that I can't change, um, that this envelope will be chosen by Travis. <laughs> and, and Travis is nowhere to be found. That's so amazing. there was a guy that... I had met right before the show named Matt and he um, he actually told me that he had bought double agent and he was asking Ooh. me some questions about it. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. I have somebody that like, you know, knows who I am in this audience. So then I literally, he was the one person that I knew because I had just met him before the show. Okay. And this is, this is not a Dunninger ploy. This is a Dunninger panic. Is I run down off the steps, I turn my mic pack off and I whisper in his ear and I go, you're Travis now, okay? <laughs> oh, 100%. And I bring him up on 100%. stage. That's and then, <laughs> That's and funny. It's so funny because I was going down the line asking people like, you know, I'm going down the line and he's going to be the last person to reveal his thing. And I'm just like, all right, what's your name? And she's like, oh, you know, like Sarah, you know, what's your name, Jim? You know, what's your name? Uh, you know, and, and they all have their own reveal in their envelope. Right. So I'm like, oh, what's your name, Sarah? And then I'm like, Sarah, can you open up your envelope? You named any number, all that kind of stuff. And then I get to the end of the line and then I just I walk up to him. And before I can even say anything, he goes, I'm Travis. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, Travis, nice to meet you. <laughs> it was just like, and then it was so funny because they show up, my friends show up at the end of the show. And my and Jim Spinato, um, yep. he was performing after me. Uh, it was his show that I was like a guest uh, performing in. Yeah. And so he's after me and they come in just to see his set and they're like who is this guy yeah who is this guy <laughs> and so then on, like, he oh ends up God. doing a routine and he calls on Travis throughout like five routines oh. <laughs> it's like Travis is, Travis and his girlfriend are the stars of that set and That's so then awesome. just the end of it my friend Adam he made a meme and it was the the Spider-Man meme where it's Spider-Man pointing at the other Spider-Man and it was yep. just like Travis <laughs> nice there's been lots of times where yeah i've had people especially doing mentalism i find it's hard i mean you get it with card tricks too where you do a card trick and you you reveal the card and the person's like that's not my card and it's like yes it is i know it's your card like or you get someone miscall it's like theirs is the eight of clubs and they're like oh i hit the three of hearts and it's like no why are you why are you being an idiot why are you trying to be funny um and usually i can turn that joke around and stuff which is fine but with mentalism i find i had a show where a guy came up on stage and continually just lied about what he picked and stuff mm. and went back and sat i i kicked him off the stage i just said i was like you know i just i for some reason i'm not connecting with you and we're going to send you back to your seat and he went back to his seat and one of my stage crew was back there and heard him go like ah i screwed up the mentalist and stuff right mm. so you get people that do that that kind of crap that are intentionally like lying on stage about what they did just to throw things off so yeah i had one that recently where this uh this russian woman um she 
Uh, and this is nothing against, Ru- I shouldn't have even said Russian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was just an asshole woman. It had nothing to do with her being Russian. <laughs> she was just very rude. Um, she, uh, so I was like, oh, are you up for, you know, and this is, you know, I'm in the middle of my set and I'm like, are you up for like 50, 50 splitting the role of the magician? We have to work together. Right. Yeah. And she's like, okay, yeah, absolutely. And so then, you know, give her the deck of cards and I'm like, can you just pick up as many cards as you like, look at the card that you cut to. Hold it to your chest, right? Hold it to your heart. And uh, and so then I turn away, and then she immediately just starts washing the cards on the table, like <laughs> doing this. And I'm just like, okay, hey, you just need you just need a card, okay? Can you like, you know, put them back together and just like pick up a card? Yeah. Um, and so then square them up because she's not, she just keeps doing this. Thank and so then right. I square up the cards and I'm like, just just pick up a card just look just look at it i turn away she immediately starts washing them again and i'm just like you just shuffled them what what is even happening and i have a time limit like in speakies i have a time limit for the set so i can't go over if someone's wasting my time it just means that i don't get to do that routine so then um so then i was like you just need to pick out one card and so then she grabs four and i was like just just one and then she was just like no two and so she grabs two cards and then i was just like okay what do you want me to do like <laughs> yeah and so and i turned to them and i was like was the last magician an asshole or something to the, yeah. to the table um but what was what was interesting is like this is a time where the whole table is on my side and yeah. against this woman because they know that she's just wasting wasting everyone's time and uh so then eventually i just like i was like okay well we'll just skip what i was planning you're you're holding on to the queen of hearts and the two of spades and then yeah. and so then she was just like oh you know and then i was just like yeah w- don't you wish that you'd actually seen what it would have been way better if we did the real trick <laughs> um and so then man stunner time, <laughs> stunner time. <laughs> so yeah. then i just uh i turn over to um this these two people who are on the other side of the table and I had picked up when they were whispering to each other that they were speaking Mandarin. And so I was like, this is an opportunity both for me to practice and for me to ostracize this woman by not including her in this last effect. Yeah. So I just did the last routine in Chinese facing away from her just for these people. Like I literally stood up, like swapped seats and sat next to the Chinese people yeah. and just did the act just for them and That's didn't really funny. care about her. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I had one lady one time that was so belligerently drunk and every time that I needed someone like threw her hand up and stuff. And I remember I got to the last, it was the last trick in the show. And I said, uh, I need someone that plays darts. Uh, is there anyone in the room that plays darts? And she's, I do. And like so loud. Right. And throughout the whole show is loud. And I'm like, anybody, anybody at all. And she's like, me. And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick her because she's, I can already tell she's like just drunk. She has a child there at a 1030 Mm -hmm. show. So I'm like, this is not great parenting. (laughs) Uh, And and you're bombed. Um, So I don't, I hope that you Uber home because this is not safe to drive. Uh, And so I pick somebody else. And uh, I always, after every single one of my shows, uh, if it's a public show, will go out and, you know, talk to or like shake Mm -hmm. hands with everybody leaving the theater Mm -hmm. and stuff. So she comes to me after and was like, why didn't you pick me? And I'm like, like, I can smell the alcohol pouring off of you. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, and I didn't say that, obviously, because you have to be polite. But I'm like, oh, you know. Maybe next time, you know, there's lots of people that want to come up on stage and stuff. And, you know, so she went to the management of this place and complained. Mm. And I was like, they came to me and they're like, oh, there's a complaint tonight. I'm like, by who? I like the, the audience was awesome. Mm. And then they're like, oh, is this lady? And I'm like, are you honestly coming to me? Because she was belligerent, belligerently drunk. Yeah. Like if you couldn't tell, she tried to interrupt the show so many times. And so they were like, okay. Yeah. She comes back like a few months later. Absolutely hammered again. Just hammered again. Hammered again. 
and we get to the last thing uh, who in the room throws darts i do i do. <laughs> like i'm not picking you again because you're drunk yeah like this is a safety thing at you're this gonna throw these darts at the audience <laughs> yeah a hundred percent and like i you know it's just it's embarrassing like i don't want to have someone like that up on stage when i'm dealing with people and stuff because it doesn't make the show look good right yeah uh, and so I don't pick her again and again <laughs> right after the show. You said you were going to pick me if I came back. And I'm like, well, you know, I just I think maybe you had too many. It's a safety concern at this point. And she, I think she complained about me again. <laughs> right. And I'm sorry. My job, <laughs> just saw that. that night I was that little kid. <laughs> Dylan Johnny, I know. I know. Dylan Johnny. It's weird that um, a kid had a we allowed to complain to a manager if the magician doesn't choose us for a trick. That, that's exactly what happened, though. She like literally went and complained to management because I didn't pick her for a trick. And I'm like, there's 150 people in the room. And because you're belligerently drunk and I don't pick you. I, I had one other time, too, where there was a guy in the audience. And again, it's a 1030 show when we were doing at Dave and Buster's. And he he had obviously had too much to drink as well. And I think I threw a piece of paper out and it got tossed around a couple times to pick someone to come up on stage. And so the person gets up and the, he's yelling, they're in on it. They're in on this trick. That's a plant. Pick somebody else. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my goodness. Uh, like obviously this is 100% random like the yeah. paper got tossed by multiple people in the room yeah and then the next thing I do I'm going out into the audience and he's yelling like if anybody needs tattoos uh hit me up here and like advertising where he's doing tattoos and stuff and I'm Dude. like Okay, that's it. And so mm -hmm. I start making comments towards them, right? Like yeah. uh, nice comments, but definitely like underlying to like shut up, right? Um, mm -hmm. And the king, uh, the the guy that I laughed the hardest at was Mac King. I saw Mac King have a child in the room one time mm -hmm. crying, and Mac was like, first time was like, oh, okay, you know, oh yeah, my hair baby and stuff. Second time was like. Um, he made a comment, something like, oh, I didn't know I wrote that baby's cry into my script or something yeah. like that, right? And like the third time, because now it's getting a little bit annoying and people have yeah. paid money to come and see the show. And he goes, um, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot get angry at this baby. Because when I was its age, if my mom and dad brought me to a show and I started to cry, they would take me out of the theater so that it didn't interrupt everybody else's. Uh, and I was like, wow, like that was a little hardcore, but it was yeah. like so pointed, but like nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, because it was Matt King, he was able to get away with it. Yeah. But I remember going like, "Ooh, like this is this. He's ripping on these people. <laughs> Sorry, my dad's ripping when he's not out with Bob. <laughs> Johnny, your family, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm complaining about them. Um, but uh, but yet yeah, I remember the the best thing was that that the audience, the audience was tired of that guy too, and they got on my side. And like I'm making these comments towards him every time he says something, and uh, he finally gets up and leaves. And there's like a couple of them together, and they leave, and the whole audience starts clapping. <laughs> and i'm like ladies and gentlemen i'm done thank you so much okay. <laughs> you know so much. and uh no uh so then i i said after they had left the room i go wow it is crazy that the room just got three octaves lower uh with those couple people leaving and stuff uh, but so many people after the show came up and were like you handled that like so well mm. because like i didn't didn't get angry at them. I didn't yell at them. I made jokes back and yeah. forth with the guy, like trying to get him to shut up. But, mm. uh, but yeah, it is, uh, it is crazy. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing is like finding a way to handle those kind of situations that the audience is on your side and, and yeah. also where, um, and also, like, if you can do it in a way where it doesn't feel like you're necessarily, like, against those people, you're just kind of like, the show has to go on. Yeah. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think as long as they know, like, the audience knows, like, this person, I mean, most people, I think, are have pretty much common sense where they know this is inappropriate, what this person is doing, right? But, um, but yeah, yeah. It, uh, it that always adds a little bit of a, a hiccup into the show, or not a hiccup, but, like, 
sometimes it can be a distraction to people viewing the show right yeah and then that's when i don't like it so yeah exactly but uh yeah that was a great question though uh i mean we, that all came from most embarrassing moments so yeah most can... embarrassing moment yeah it is a really good question yeah and uh yeah there's a lot of them there's a lot of <laughs> embarrassing moments in magic um yeah, oh, yeah. there was another one that came to mind but i yeah, i still wish uh I, I had a photo of this way back in the day uh, and I should ask Stan Allen about her or his daughter about it. Stan had a list one time because a lot of times we go and watch other magicians too. Like I love going and seeing a magic show uh, mm. and the, uh, you know, cause I think it inspires me and pushes me to mm. be, to be better or to go and write and stuff. And just, it gets my mind going on what, what can be done in the art and stuff. Um, uh, if we can call it an art, I guess. Yeah. I still call it an art. Yeah. But um, uh, but the the uh, the crazy thing. So Stan had this list: the top ten things to say to a magician after they've done like a really shitty show, mm. right? or something just terrible on stage. And it was like they were all like undermining comments. So one was I still remember one was like uh, you'd say to the per the performer like Wow, I've never seen anything like that on stage. Right. And, yeah. and it's like a comment where you're like, oh, thanks. Yeah. But, but like, it doesn't, it doesn't like, it doesn't mean that it's good. It's yeah. good, but it's like, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I've never seen anything like that on stage. Yeah. He had a top 10 list that was so good. I remember I took a photo of it at live. Uh, this is a few years back, uh, but I, I can't find the photo now. But I'm going to find, I'll, I'll maybe message him mm. there or his daughter and see if I can get it uh, because it was so good. I, yeah. We should, we should, what we should do is when guests come on, try to throw one of them out per episode <laughs> to oh, one of the yeah. guests. You like, just yeah. like, wow. I've, wow. Never, I've never seen anything never like, seen that. like that. Um, but yeah, it was always, be always funny. especially because most of the people watching right now are like the people that are here every week. You know, mm -hmm. and we appreciate you guys being on every week. So it'll be fun to kind of have like a little inside joke with people. Yeah, just have an inside joke. As, that, yeah, they as, don't realize that it's a subtle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As we do when we have, uh, you know, uh, what what book uh, or what audio book you. Uh, write. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's the best one of the best inside jokes ever. But uh, but if we could have more things like that, that would be awesome. So, yeah, they fall right into the clutches of our of our ad read. <laughs> uh fiddle and johnny says that he does a fair amount of shows at the uh, rock shows and crowds are drunk he says i love that challenge yeah sometimes it yeah. is great and i mean i've had a lot of fun with a lot of drunk people uh because like i said i used to do dave and busters uh we did four shows every weekend and so we'd have mm. usually the usually the eight o'clock show was pretty good but the 10 30 show was like yeah usually there's a lot of college guys and stuff in there that are drunk and stuff and it was fun, but there was some some weeks where it, you know, someone yeah, said it was less too, fun, <laughs> way too much. I remember one time I, I said to a guy at the table, uh, I think he maybe he said that he could throw darts or something. I said, "Come on up," and then he stood up and almost fell over. And I was like, "You stay right there. You stay right there. <laughs> like, I don't need you to touch anything." Like he um, he could barely walk to the stage, but from where I was stand, standing, you couldn't see that. So yeah, but. Um, uh, yeah, there's so many experiences with drunk people. I mean, I've told my experience of like my one of my first gigs where the woman just started yelling at me like as I was walking up to her table, like the the first table of my first ever restaurant gig. And this woman just like as I'm walking up with my deck of cards about to say hi, she just starts yelling at me from across the room like, no, get away from me. I don't want to see anything. Get away from me. Don't come near me. Like nice. I was just like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, like just little like 15 year old Blaze, like just terrified. <laughs> That's always, it's still the weird thing for me. Like I still do a lot of walk around uh, here and there anyways, uh, but usually a couple times a week I'm doing walk around and um, <clears throat> I still, every once in a while, you'll walk up to someone and be like, Hey, can I show you something? Or, you know, I go into a few different ways, but every once in a while you'll get someone that's like, Oh no, no, I don't want to see anything. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, and I, I mean, we talked about it last week. It's like some people just deep down hate magic, you know? Uh, and that's why I said it's always been different from music because you, it's, it's easy to say like, Oh, I hate that band. Yeah. Or I, you know, I hate that singer, but it's, I've never heard someone say I hate music. Yeah. You know, like, cause it's just, it's very, very odd. Maybe there is that person, but I've never heard of them. 
Yeah. Uh, I've heard of some people that, that, that say that they don't like music, but I'm just like, I think that you just probably haven't heard music that you like, you know, because yeah. there's so much and it taps into something that's kind of like at our core. Yeah. And magic can do the same thing. Like it's just a different kind of emotion. But uh, yeah, if people have seen a lot of bad magic, then they just think that they hate magic as a whole. <laughs> Ryan, you should ask without reaching for your zipper. <laughs> <laughs> um can i show a uh, a triumph that i came up with with some of the discord people uh, no that I think, no <laughs> no no we don't do magic on this you show. don't do magic on this show uh yeah sure let's see okay. it let's see let's it see. let's see all right so here um let's see if i can do this because this is a, a very fun new idea all right so uh i'll give this a mix i agree okay and uh all right, Ryan. So while I'm going through, can you just this chord is going to be very interesting to do? Yeah. With, but, all right, Ryan. Can you just uh, say stop anytime? Stop. Okay. So here, take a look at the card. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to do something kind of interesting. I'll flip over half of the cards so that yeah. now we have half face down and half face up. Okay. Yeah. So now if we just shuffle these together. All right. Now just imagine all of the face down cards starting to pull away, flip over, except for one here, and then. One card in the deck. I think I passed it here. There you go. There we go. Very okay. Nice. Five of clubs. But I think that it's like I think that it's an interesting retention of vision, and I yeah. I wonder can it fly? Like, I mean, I, I have a trick I'm writing a book on that uh, is not a magic trick at all. Yes, but I can't, but this is different. It flies. This, it flies. Yeah. No, I mean, I yeah. literally. Uh, so no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, not. Uh, no, so I've, I didn't, I'm sure I told you about this. I have a color changing deck that never changed. Yeah, no, no, you've yeah, told yeah. me about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I'm writing a book on it because I think that it's a fascinating premise that I come up with. Yeah. Where people believe things are happening that are not happening because they are creating those moments in their mind. And once they're created, it's impossible to, like, you could argue it with people that, and they will say no, or they'll come up with ways that it, makes it true for them mm. um and it, i opened a, a theater show with 400 people in the mm. audience thinking the non-trick this could bomb yeah this could absolutely crash and burn so bad if someone any if i had a belligerent person in the room that yeah. night but instead it got shocked audible like <gasps> Yeah. And I can like me and the stage hand that was working, videoing the whole thing. We like it was to a point where I was almost laughing on stage because yeah. I was like, it worked. Yeah. You're like, no <laughs> like, way that it got away with that. You have I, the video of it. I, I think we do have a video of it. Um, oh, that'd be sick to see. Yeah. Because it was insane. Like I thought for sure, you know, 100 percent this these people are going to figure this out. Uh, because I knew I fooled magicians with it, but magicians were overthinking it, I think. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, layman. And I fooled a couple layman, like, you know, two or three people together, but not 400 in a room. And I was mm. like, could I fool 400 people all at one time with a trick that's not a trick? Mm. Uh, that it's just verbiage. And man, it worked. A trick the trick that never was. Yeah, and it's it's actually super cool. So that's why I'm uh, I'm writing a book on it. But uh, yeah, yeah. If it bombs, ask Trunk West Parker to come on stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was fun. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, those guys drink a lot of beer, uh, yeah. a lot of drinks. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I don't understand going on stage being bombed, but uh, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lindsay, uh, Phil and Johnny says, Lindsay, you're cracking me up. Lindsay always, every week, yeah, has every the, week has, the, has the just bangers. Moves. Just so, Lindsay just really crushes it with uh, the comment game. Yeah, we should bring him on sometime. Uh, I know I, we've we've both uh, caught him on his Twitch uh, stream, and and I know they were saying to add someone else on Twitch. Uh, I saw earlier someone was saying, I think it was Lindsay calling us out to uh, to follow someone on Twitch. Mm. Uh, where was it? Uh, oh, I saw that like earlier. I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's earlier. Uh, but yeah, I can't find it now. Uh, oh, there it is. 
says blaze ryan follow rb when you're on twitch next mr burns 77 mr so. burns 77 oh nice okay yeah, yeah absolutely sweet, sweet. Um, yeah. but uh he's yeah. been a supporter for a long time 100 percent uh anything crazy new coming up and crazy new opportunities up. uh exciting things i mean i've been doing a, a show at this members only club that's uh, i'm excited about so nice. that's, that's moving forward and uh yeah trying to really establish that and then um this week or this month is kind of like picking up with with private things you know right. so uh yeah. so that's been really fun and i have this kind of nightmare alley themed uh gig that i'm doing at the right. end of this month so that'll be fun cool. yeah. yeah um that's pretty sweet that's pretty sweet yeah that is the nice thing is live gigs are coming back and stuff yeah. uh hopefully covid stays have you done many virtual shows recently no, everything has been live now. Yeah. Uh, I did a couple virtual shows in the last like month, but uh, like I've actually took down all my soft boxes in here uh, and stuck to just the uh, the newer lights and stuff now, mm. or the sorry the GVMs, um, just smaller setup so that that way I have more office space again. So it's a little bit nicer. I can move around in my office and it's not like crazy packed. Mm. Um, but uh yeah um blaine had his first live show in las vegas this yeah. past week uh which yeah it was looking actually really sick all of the promo photos look kind of yeah. really crazy i love the new poster i was like oh i need to go just to get the new poster mm. um because I, I i think his posters are incredible i yeah. i should buy them all but uh i i should have bought them years ago when you could buy them all for like 100 bucks mm. he said he had like a package of them uh, but I didn't do that. And so now they're like a hundred bucks each. Um, but, um, you know, the, the crazy thing is, so like, uh, I talked to Michael Blau about it and I sent Michael a message cause I saw he was there on opening night mm. and I asked him like, how, cause I've seen his live show a couple times. And I said, how much different is it than that, that show? And he says, it's not that much different except for the start of the show. He does two things. Mm. So yeah, I know he takes the balloons up yeah. to the ceiling and, um, and then he dives off the um, uh, the podium into boxes for like mm. the vertigo thing. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, so he's like recreating his biggest feats. All yeah, his, yeah. So I watched. I was reading a review on it today, or a, a thing on it, and they said for vertigo, he stands up there for like seventeen minutes. What? Yeah, and they're like, oh, he causes all this tension and stuff. So I don't know what he's doing up there, if he's like dancing close to the edge or whatever, or talking about like what can happen yeah. when he, if he falls wrong or whatever. But I was like 17 minutes of watching a guy <laughs> up there seems Jeez. a little crazy. I said, you know, like even I know he ends the show with uh, uh, doing the underwater uh, breath hold uh, yeah. or – that's how he he does like a card trick after that with everybody. Yeah. But um, but that's technically how he used to end the show was like the underwater. Yeah. Uh, and he usually tries to go for ten minutes. Uh, and I saw like he only hit nine, I think, at that show. But again, it's weird because it's like you're sitting on the stage watching a guy stay underwater for nine minutes. So there's yeah. no talking, nothing. You're there's just a clock going in. The I mean, well, they they usually have a host that then comes out with a mic and is like, at least when I saw it, there was like someone oh. doing a countdown and was like kind of keeping things exciting and engaging. And I think that they have another oh, yeah. person that's doing that kind of thing. I think there is now yeah, in Vegas. But when I saw it, uh, I saw the, when he was in Canada, it was very early on. He did not have that. I don't think it was just like, uh, and it was still crazy because you're watching it going like, holy crap, like this is, you know, six yeah. minutes, seven minutes. And I can hold my breath for four minutes. That was the longest mm. I ever did. And I practiced to do yeah. it um, because I heard that Houdini could hold his breath for four minutes. So I said, mm. if he could do it, I could do it. And so I practiced and practiced for hours and fun hours to be able to do it. Um, and I thought that was like incredible. Now, obviously he's using, he tells, he says like he goes off off stage um they said he has he's the most ballsy performer in vegas because he takes a 17 or 18 minute intermission mm. and no show in vegas takes an intermission mm. because mad every show has to be fast paced hard hitting yeah. uh and so 
they said that was the craziest thing is that he took a 17 minute or 18 minute intermission and it worked. It was fine. Um, but yeah. And I wonder like, you know, I know why there's reasons he can't do his show all the time. Mm. Uh, like back to back, like someone like Copperfield or Pennington exactly. and stuff yeah. could do. So, I mean, yeah, it's like so physically taxing. Like yeah. he's doing a oh, lot yeah. of things that are just actually really like yeah. Well, he body, like that know? whole day he can't eat and stuff, yeah. right? Like he's doing so much stuff where he's spitting up water and doing all yeah, other frogs stuff and that, that, that he can't he can't eat. So it's like, um, but I, I think he says in the after the show, like he goes off stage and he's sucking back oxygen for seventeen mm. minutes to be able to do that breath hold. Because he has to oxygenize, oxygenize his blood, yeah, yeah. Uh, to be able to do it, which is crazy that you're like doing that so frequently. I don't know if there's any long term effects. Yeah, that I wonder. Have. Yeah, because um, you're you're you have to hyperventilate and yeah, he's hyperventilating, like, flush the, the flush the like carbon dioxide out of your system. Yeah, 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 yeah. and so that's why I, I don't know if that if what the long term effects of doing that are, but. The only thing I said is his next two shows, like I said, oh, maybe I'll fly out to Vegas and see one, are on the worst dates possible for magicians to go see. Oh, really? What? Oh, he's got like October 27th and 28th. So most people that are working mm. pros, close to Halloween, yeah. you're oh, yeah. getting those, a lot those of Those are bookings, totally booked for me, yeah. Right? And then the next one is December 16th and 17th, which is like uh, the yeah. most prime so, yeah. weekend uh, in – in december for events so i'm like wow so oh. he's being very very selective with the dates that he's doing yeah there's only three three dates like six shows uh oh, wow. as of right now so who knows if they'll do it into the new year but like i'm gonna go to new york in november to see aussie's show and i'm yeah. like yeah that's great because aussie's performing all the time and so you can kind yeah. of work around it you can go to a midweek show and stuff exactly right but it's like with Blaine, it's like, no, he does a Friday and Saturday night. And it's like, that's when everybody's working. So, but, uh, yeah, so we'll see. I, I won't get it to it this year. Right? Cause I literally, I had the 28th open this month and I said, maybe I'll fly out on the 27th, but I have a gig that night. So I said, I'll have to fly out the morning of the 28th, go see the show, fly back. Cause I've got another show on the yeah. 29th. Actually, wait, I might be able to see it. I have a gig on the 28th in uh, in New York, yeah. but I will be in Vegas on the 27th if I just oh, fly it's on, back the, on the 28th. It's on the 28th and 29th. Oh, 28th and 29th. Yeah, it's the Friday and Saturday. Oh, uh, yeah. Because that's what I said. I could. I was like, I've got a gig on the Thursday yeah, night, and I didn't have a gig on the Friday night, and then like three days ago, I got a Man, call. Nope, I gym. can't do either of those dates. Dang. So, yeah. Oh, so, that's a very sad face. That's very much uh, sad face. It sucks because I, I said I would fly up to Vegas to see it. Even though I've seen the show twice, I know there's some added things to it that, that seem cool. I, I want to see what they are. Um, but the dates seem to be like the worst dates. So I'm like, oh. So, but it's so interesting because it's like he must have plans to do many more shows i'm assuming because the amount of money invested in this vegas show to be able to do all of those feats and things like is a significant yeah. investment to then be like all right we're gonna do like two well, shows a month i did look up ticket prices mm. and so he said that the only he said he has never thought about doing anything in vegas before because the theaters were all too small mm. Uh, and so the theater, it, he's performing it. It's that new hotel that's kind of down mm. at the end of the strip towards the stratosphere. Yeah, Resorts World. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it's like I looked and the theater is massive, massive. Mm. But if you want a front row seat, it's like 2000 US or mm. something like that. So it's like, you know, a, an unheard of amount for like a Vegas show, right? Like you yeah. could go see celine dion and oh Jade it's five thousand capacity concert and entertainment venue yeah, okay. five thousand like yeah you know you're looking at like penn and teller is like 1200 or 1500 i think max yeah. and like copperfield probably this like i didn't even think his is a thousand maybe mm -hmm. um and yeah, so, i don't think copperfield is even a thousand yeah 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 and, and penn and tellers may not be either i know they i think they say it if it's 1200 but it may be 800 or something like yeah. that 
but um, and they have more. Theirs is more theater. Well, theirs is theater yeah. seating, seating where Copperfields is like dinner seating uh, for for most wow. of it and stuff. So five thousand seats is insane. Yeah, so okay, so they're crushing it. Yeah, so he can do the right. show whenever so he, he wants. Whenever like, he wants. Yeah. yeah, it's like, and if you're selling tickets for two thousand dollars and selling a lot of those for the front row seats, um, you know, you're you're doing all right. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's crushing it. Jeez, yeah. that's, that's interesting. I, I really want to see the show at some point, but yeah, yeah those, those are tough dates. Yeah. yeah, hopefully he'll continue into the new year, but there's nothing posted yet. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Hmm. I think they said yeah. they were talking about doing another tour uh, per se, but we'll yeah. see. If anyone wants to hear my thoughts on uh, on Aussie's show, uh, I gave like a bit of an update last week on the uh, on the episode, and we had a really fun discussion last week. That was yeah. That was the, the, I, the, I was the surprised. I, I kept checking this week because I thought a lot of our times that we have guests on and stuff, we goof around and we chat and we we have fun and stuff, yeah. and you know, and it's funny and it's fun, and you know, I've I've always said that we like to see who the person is off stage, and sometimes we don't talk that much magic, but last week was like all magic. Yeah. Uh, and there was great questions that came in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's, I kept checking to see if it had more views than, uh, than it does, but uh, it doesn't. Hopefully people, yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh, so oh, check oh. out last week's episode. It was check a good it one. It was yeah, actually yeah. a really good one. And, uh, and give it a like and stuff. And sh if you'd like to see more episodes like that, uh, because we would love to do more guestless episodes where we can, you know, be more free form mm -hmm. and talk about whatever. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, get more in the weeds on things. Definitely. But, I yeah. see. Uh, yeah, Arby said I missed last week. Uh, who was it? It was just us. It was just us. Just us. Yeah. But it was, it was probably fun. one of the most in-depth magic conversations that we've had on the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because... Or at least in a long time. Definitely. Uh, yeah. uh, Blaine yeah. is going to Vegas and is not losing money. The only mag magician to do so. Uh, I've never lost money in Vegas. That's always the fun mm. thing. Is uh, I've always yeah. made money when I go there. So. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I think that a lot of the acts do make money. It's not like everyone's crashing, burning in Vegas. No, uh, magic acts though are tough. They are yeah. tough. Uh, they, we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of magicians come in. Oh yeah, try to do it. Yeah, yeah. I guess the uh, only ones who are really making it are the ones who are there. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. uh, I mean, there is yeah, Whew. yeah, quite a few that I can name that didn't. They didn't even last six months, mm, and, wow. and like that's tough. Like. That's I rough. feel like you have to have enough money going into it to like support yourself for a year. Oh yeah. To really try to build it. Uh, I was explaining yeah, this. How are you going to break bit. through and build momentum? Yeah. You got guys like Xavier Mortimer who have blown, not blown up there, I guess, but like blown up on TikTok and Facebook and stuff where that's helped them massively. Mm. Um, but I feel like you almost have to do that now before going into Vegas, because if you're not, you're like, like, who is this guy, you know, like, and how do you get the publicity that you need to be able to do it? So, and I, th I think that's probably the one thing that, uh, audience members, uh, don't realize because you get asked all the time. I'm sure you do as well, where it's like, man, you should be in Vegas or why aren't you, why are you here and not in Vegas? And it's like, well, cause in Vegas, I need like a $3 million budget to start. And that's going to be gone in a few months, you know, exactly. uh, yeah. and, like, and so I may leave with nothing yeah. if it's not working out. So, yeah, uh, uh, I'm getting uh, told. Yes. OK, the yeah, playlist will be up updated to tonight. Updated. <laughs> updated. So um, <laughs> you have a lot of promo money. That's it. That's what you yeah, need. You though, have to have there. a lot of promo it's money. Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. And you see all of these Vegas acts, like all of the different, you know, taxis that have, you know, Matt Franco or Chris Angel on the side or something yeah. and all the billboards, like every single one of those is like a little reminder in someone's head, like, oh, I should buy a ticket. Yeah. And, you know, when they see they're bombarded with all these different shows that they could buy a ticket to, it's really, you know, you've got to like catch their attention and be able to, uh, you know, get them to go for your show versus anything else. It's really tough to survive in Vegas. Um, I'm not no, in Vegas but... because I use magic orthodoxy's double lift. That's really the first step. <laughs> um, there was some magic drama. Um, there was some magic drama in these streets. Um, and Craig Petty talked about it. There was uh, an effect. Craig Petty of... talked about it. Yeah, Craig Petty talked so about it. not yell about it. Yeah, uh, there was a um, there was an effect diamond cutter that was put out by uh, oh. by Amanda Nepo. And okay. 
uh, and there was a similar effect that was put out, or I guess is about to come out by this guy, Aaron Ducker, uh, that is uh, from Australia. And I think it's called better half. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the thing is that they're, they're similar in, in premise and, uh, and method, but, um, Amanda's is a visual transformation, whereas his was more of like a kind of psychological effect. And, uh, and so there was controversy because I guess Aaron submitted the trick to Penguin and then Penguin d- rejected it and then okay. they accepted Amanda's. And so then there was all of this kind of hoopla about like, why are you throwing Australia under the bus? I'm not. I'm just saying <laughs> he's from Australia. Um, but uh, Diamond Cutters by Diamond Dallas Page. I was going to say the same thing. Um, uh, but yeah, like I... Um, so that was the, the hoopla was kind of they were saying like, oh, did you know, did they reject it from one magician and then accept it from another, you know, uh, and put it out with them? Um, I although I, I know Aaron uh, and, you know, I've hung out with him a bunch of times. I do think that the effects are like personally yeah, different. different enough, you know, because I, I think that what she added with like a visual change is kind of like yeah. the moment that I really like. Um, but yeah, magic that was orthodoxy is or magic orthodoxy. Wow. Sorry, Fiddle and Johnny. I was still reading, still laughing about the last comment uh, from Lindsay. Uh, says that he'll be uh, reviewing Diamond Cutter next week. Oh, nice. Or the fall. Yeah, check out Fiddle and Johnny's week, review. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you guys aren't following Fiddle and Johnny, make sure to follow his reviews because the guy, he knows he knows a ton. Mm, uh, talking yeah. to him and has reviewed so much stuff that he knows as well what is good and bad and what works and doesn't. So make sure to follow him. Uh, and he's and, just a and cool guy. Me. Yeah. Phil and Johnny was like, the man. he was, I mean, um, I was, I was talking to move monkey this week, this past week as well that we met in Vegas, but fiddle and Johnny still had probably the best introduction to me, uh, when he just came up and said, I'm a huge fan of yours and I'm about to blow your mind. Mm. You have no idea who I am. And I was mm. like, you are correct, my friend. And then he yeah. said, I'm feeling Johnny. And, and then it was like, and then oh, the no. skies <laughs> opened and it was just like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fantastic. So I uh, can't wait for the next Magic Live, hopefully, or, or yeah, one other Magi convention to whatever, be able yeah. to, to hang out. Magi Fest, yeah, that's coming up soon. Which I think they just, let me see. I think just Magi the Fest X, yeah. just announced or ticket sales have been available now. Yeah. Um, but uh, did I get it? Uh, very important Magi Fest reminder. Yeah, I was doing the show with this Australian lady. Uh, it has nothing to do with her being Australian. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> You've said that a couple times tonight. Eh? Uh, no, no, no. I was reading. Lady, Lindsay, no, no, Lindsay, no, Lindsay, no, Lindsay was making fun of what I said before about the Oh, Russian I know. No, I funny. know. I'm messing. Uh, but as I'm saying is you're like, uh, this lady is Australian. Yeah. Uh... Uh, what the oh annual letter why is that very important reminder i wonder if this uh, this email is for some reason is not opening so uh but i wonder i've had a booth at, at magi fest a couple times so they may just be messaging me about getting a booth uh because i don't know what this one is but i know they did announce last week some of their uh uh talent coming in and stuff so it looks like it's going to be pretty good pretty good yeah, so far looks pretty so. sweet so that's but, awesome. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, I think this has been a fun one. I, I think uh, so. I, I need to get downstairs and uh, and take over for Anya watching Mr. Levi for a few hours. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll have Jeanette back on the uh, the show sometime yeah, be really uh, in yeah. the future because uh, I wanted to ask her about if magic is an art, you know, because she has an art background. I feel like she, yeah. would, be a, she would have a great answer. It would be an interesting answer for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want to learn more about this algorithm and stuff. Like I know they said um, uh, yeah. like it, it was determined on the most popular nouns. Mm. Which is interesting to me because then it's like, well, then it just really depends on who wrote the book. Right? Yeah, I mean, and also, well, I'm curious about like how they factored into the level, the interest level, you know, because it can't be just like the most popular nouns in a book. It's got to be like what people found most interesting yeah. of the material in the book and like what would be surprising. I want to see her produce a pocket, a, a, car, a hand out of a hand pocket, and a pocket out of that hand. Man. Yeah, that's the best. That was the best one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'd love to see the show because I, and then see, 
you know, like I said, the fine tuned work of, like you said, how did they, they figure that out? You know? And, yeah. and like I said, she said it was all to do with verbiage and stuff, but then it's like, well, if one trick just uses the same noun over and over and over, yeah, did that make that trick more surprising? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I didn't, I didn't fully grasp that. I maybe I'm going to have to watch her explanation back again <laughs> to, uh, to get a more of a grasp on it, but uh, yeah, because I, I realized like, oh, I guess the question that I asked required a lot more questions first <laughs> before yeah. we could get there. So yeah. I think she was trying to like give all the backstory, and it was like, oh wow, this is a lot. This was a lot, yeah. So, but uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully, you enjoyed it tonight. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, do, can we tell them who the guest is next week? Who's uh, a guest? You have a guest lined up for next week. I do. Yes. I think it's two guests next week. So two yeah. for the price so, of one. This is a, another second site act. So this nice. is uh, be really nice. cool. So Sweet deal. Yeah. awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. We will hopefully be getting a games night together very soon. Uh, my schedule is getting a little bit uh, crazier, but it's always crazy. Mm -hmm. So we'll make it happen uh, before, especially before uh, it gets really nuts. So yeah, thanks we'll find so much, time for a games night soon. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Peace.